In our last segment, the water had risen quite dramatically from the spring melt, and it was difficult to work with. But here it is in the summer, and everything has calmed down, and we finished our bridge and our pipeline. So it was quite a bit of effort to get there. When we got to work, the water was still raging and the pipe bridge was only half done. So we decided to bury the pipe at the beginning of the run, which had a very mild grade to it. And we needed to use a laser transit to be able to level the pipe properly. We only had an eighth of an inch per foot for the first 300 feet. We did run into some major rocks. This is probably the biggest one we dug out. And with great effort, Dale was able to dig it out. We came from around the corner over there and for 300 feet maintained grade and ended up digging through this hill quite deep. When we were working in the trench, we had to be very careful that the soil did not collapse on us and bury us. We did clear some trees to get through the forest, but we picked the ones that were the weakest, and we didn't actually kill very many trees at all. What we're using is gasketed bell end pipe and it's important to put the bell end on the upside of the hill. That way they, the water feeds into the pipe properly. It's equally important to bed it properly with soil on both sides so that when you rebury the pipe it isn't damaged by rocks falling on it. This is a light grade of pipe and that would be easily done if we didn't take care. As we came off the hill we installed an air vent in the pipe to allow any air bubbles that might develop to escape the pipe through this uh, flexible poly pipe which will stand up when we're done. It won't freeze in the winter. Knocks the dust around the outside of that lens. And that in the long run makes for a better seal, right? Yeah, makes it keeps that out of there so then the water can get in behind it and squeeze onto the pipe. And then you want to get it around the front edge of that. Yeah, the front edge is most important. Just get it to where it starts starts to seal without pinching that seal and getting it to where it... Fresh duck butter. I wonder where the name duck butter came from. I really don't know. So when you get it on there, it cinches up as you tighten it up, right? Yeah. Yeah, as long as you keep the hook this way and basically get to where this starts scrunching and then it puts more weight on the on the metal piece and it'll start squeezing the pipe. Zane, you need to go up a little bit, I think. I think you're going to have to lift up on it a little bit, Zane. Probably it, I think. Go one more. They aren't all exact measurements on those lines. No, they aren't. Go one more. Yeah, that's it. As we got to the bottom of this hill, the rate at which the pipe was falling shifted quite dramatically to a very shallow slope. And we needed to put a joint in to this hole here. And so we used an 11 and a quarter elbow and we just used your regular primer and glue and put them together. It's important to hold the 
joints in place, as you know, until the plastic melds together. It's also important to really use new glue because you really don't want to redo this kind of a thing and sink the joints all the way in. Here we're building what's called a thrust block and we will sink it into concrete and it will help keep the pipe from moving at a point of stress where the pipe turns. So we just keep uh, burying and digging. A skid steer is a really good tool for burying things because it has tracks on it and not wheels, so the weight of the machine is spread out evenly and you don't crush the pipe. As you can see, we got into quite a few rocks down here near the creek. And throughout the whole length of the pipe, Dale was able to bend the pipe and not use these joints which I had designed into the layout of the pipe. In doing so, He's probably saved quite a bit of money for me and also will get more pressure out of the pipe because there's no friction at any of these joints. Starting at the top of the pipe, we go across a long flat area through a hillside, past the air vent, down a hill, through another meadow where we join the road the pipe grade changes here and this is where a lot of the pressure is built up as the pipe goes down the hill steeply. We change again pipe grades down another steep hill past the thrust block down through the flat near the creek through lots of rock and we end up at the powerhouse. The 6 inch pipe will transition into 4 inch steel pipe. We tack the pieces together for accurate alignment and we will take it out to the powerhouse to assemble it all. 45 degree elbows are used to bring the pipe above ground. Everything is made of steel at the end of the pipe for maximum strength. This is the point of maximum pressure. Flanges are welded on so we can use a gate valve to shut the whole system down. Alignment is critical on all these parts because we don't yet have the turbine in place. We have to be extremely accurate in our measurements. Make sure that everything is right so that it all fits together when we assemble it in the final course. One final piece of pipe is cut and we are just about done with the pipeline. Assembling the pieces with tack welds will allow us to take the final piece to town for final welding which will make it all waterproof. Here's a six inch gate valve that shuts the whole system down.